Welcome again to this segment of the Independent Producers Association. Uh, I'm Bruce Broussard, uh, and uh, in fact, as far as I'm concerned, we've got three hosts here. We've got four hosts here tonight. We've got folks that are going to be giving you some, uh, get you a sort of little insight about uh, the upcoming election. We've got the upcoming election, the mayoral election, and the city council election here in, in, in Portland. That's basically in the primary. We've got, we got some 16 candidates that are going to be running for mayor. 16 candidates are going to be running for mayor. And there, there are a number of candidates going to be running for two city council seats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, the bottom line is that, uh, so it's very, very important that many of those individuals who are going to be running for mayor really don't have some of the issues that should be, in fact, uh, discussed. Well, we've got some serious problems here in our city. Uh, we, we've, seen the other, we've seen other situations in other parts of the country. And we, we're a city of roses. And in, in many ways, we are the the welcoming mat, if you will, for the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very important piece. People come here first and whatever. And, and so, um, uh, so it's going to be very important that, uh, that the folks who are running, I mean, they, they qualify because all they had to do is, if, for a mayor, mayorship for that matter, all you had to do is come up for your name, <laughs> that, that you are a citizen of Portland, and you have 50 bucks. I have some issues about that, but that's the way it is right now can't talk about this at that point in time, but I think that's, a, that's an issue that, in all due respect, I happen to be a candidate that, 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 that's running for mayor at the same time, and that naturally one of the things I was concerned about was that, was that form, you know, that, that, that form, and I, and I think that we may have to look at that, because I, we really need to get folks who are seriously understand some of the issues that we have here. And, uh, and so in the past, it's basically has been kind of like, you got 16 candidates, they will kind of pick the the top two people with money or this, that, and the other. But as far as I'm concerned, if you got 16 candidates, it should all be treated equally. Yeah. Now, if we change it, that's different. But right now, we treat everybody. So the part of what we're going to be playing tonight, uh, we're going to talk about um, about police, law enforcement here in the, in the city of Portland. And uh, and as you can see, my guests here tend to reflect that. And we're just going to have a, just a candid discussion. Uh, they're going to be open. To, they've got backgrounds in various areas and whatever. And we're going to have a candid discussion. So the whole purpose to the public as well as those individuals who are running for office to give you some ideas of what the issue is here within the city of Portland as it relates to law enforcement, okay? And joining me today, I've got my dear friend Don, Don Dupay. As you notice, he's got, uh, Don Dupay's got a jacket on. He's it's a Navy jacket and he's got his, he's got his military hat because he is a veteran in, in his own yes, right aspect Navy. of it. That's, that's, that's background stuff because we are reaching out for the vet. That's the other thing that we're doing and Don's part of that. And plus the fact that uh, he's going to hopefully, if things work out well, he's going to be the police commissioner on my side of the ring. <laughs> okay. And then we, we, we got Royal. I was going to say Royal. Royal, <laughs> <laughs> Royal Harris. <laughs> Royal has, has been very, very much involved uh, in community with youth and, and a number of activities and just, just really, really just engage in many ways on different levels on all subject matters. But this is one area that he's, and as far as I'm concerned, he's spent a lot of time in and, and we really welcome you on. And, and, and it's, it's, it's really a, a wealth, if you will, uh, that, uh, of information that he brings to the table, just like I said, the rest of the folks too. And then Teresa Dupay. I mean, she is the she is the principal behind this guy on the other end over there. But, but anyway, uh, she's written several books, and she's she's been a very much important a part of uh, her husband's book, Behind the Badge in River City, a Portland Police Memoir, which is something that Don put together, which is really great. But Teresa was very instrumental in helping him well the editing, and, and everyone has that right. That's part of the deal, Just right? Just about, yeah. Anyway, but anyway, um, and she's written a book. She's got her first one, and we we've interviewed her on Oregon Voters Digest. And we want to thank her, and, and she's a, and she's really a researcher, and I really like that. And she's going to be very instrumental, not only in my campaign, <laughs> but in all due respect, in, in getting the issues out to the public, mm -hmm. because we got so many people running. I'm sure they're they're very sincere about what they're uh, wanting to say or whatever. They plucked the money down. They went they went up there and filed, and that takes a lot of courage to run for office. But the fact of the matter is, the main thing is that we're living in a city. We've got a lot of folks. We've got a little, almost about 700,000 people here within this city. And we've got issues across the board. Marijuana has just been signed off. And we've got all kinds of things that are happening right now. So it's, it's very important to pay attention. And so one thing that Teresa brings to the, to the table is that she's going to be doing a lot of, of auditing and, and, you know, and that kind of a deal to kind of get a sense of what are the facts on the books so that we can either talk about that change and no change. So with that, folks, you got it. I'm Bruce Broussard. Like I said, I, I filed for office, and we're going to naturally want to give everybody equal time along that line, and, and we're going to be arranging, I'm arranging a, a candidate's fair here for the, uh, 
uh, for IPO and, 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 and cable. It's very important because these are the little people. We're not the establishment. We're not the politios. We're the little people, and they need to know, most of them. They're very much important. So with that, uh, I'm just going to open up for a discussion. We'll just start off by making a point that uh, we'll uh, introduce Don right off the bat here. He's a former Portland policeman. And he's written this book, Behind the Badge in River City, and a Portland police memoir aspect of it. And uh, he's sort of like, he has the history, you know, he's the background in terms of police work. So Don, what would you tell, uh, the, let's say, uh, future, these future candidates who are running for office, and they, they, they're running for office right now, what would you, what, how would you educate them about the history? Besides, uh, if you will, well, at least they can read the book or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I can, can read the book. Mm -hmm. um, Portland police history is very interesting, and uh, my experience with it goes back uh, to 1961, which was a completely different era. It's not so much, uh, this book is not about the current Portland Police Department or any manner of corruption or problems with them. This is a history book, so times are different. Police work basically remains the same, but the technology has changed, so that's uh, the main change in police work is technology. It used to be almost, you know, wire to wire, smoke signals, but nowadays they have all these channels and communications and able to uh, check people's records right from the police car, which is uh, which is one real good thing for police work. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now tell me this, if there was anything that you think should have been carried forth to today, yes. as opposed to from a historical standpoint, what do you think should be carried forth that, that, you know, from, as far as police work and also from the citizens aspect of it? Well, you know what I think, Bruce? I think that the first step in community policing, mm -hmm. which is a word that's been around ever since I was a 25-year-old cop, so it's not new, is to put the police back into blue uniforms. That's the first thing. You have to make the police look less threatening. We don't want our policemen looking like Gestapo, ninja, bald heads, um, boots, jumpsuits, all of this black stuff on. That's what makes the problem, creates a lot of the problem. It creates the us, they. They are the intruders. They are the invaders. We need to go back to a simpler uniform. That's the first step in community policing. Okay, well, we'll, we'll There's stop. There's another step. No, no, we'll we'll have another? Okay, good, you said another step. What's another area you want? Well, the other, the other step is less and less specialization in the police department. We have way too much specialization. What do you mean by that? Well, not, not, not to beat up on the traffic division, but their only purpose is to investigate accidents, which certainly need to be investigated, especially serious ones, and producing revenue. We've got a motorcycle division that uh, has 24 motorcycle officers, and their entire job is to create revenue for the city. That's their only job. You know what? We don't have time for a police department to be so involved in revenue. So what I would do is I would take those motorcycle officers. If you've got 24 of them, that's 12 two-man cars. Mm -hmm. We put those two-man cars back on the street. Now, that doesn't mean that... Tire, that uh, Traffic tickets aren't still going to be uh, written. Of course they are. When a policeman sees a traffic violation, he writes a ticket. But that's not his primary job. Revenue and revenue in, uh, bringing in revenue is not his primary job. Mm -hmm. So I feel the same way about internal affairs. If you've got a dozen guys working internal affairs, there's six more two-man cars. Mm -hmm. So Good. It, we need to stop specializing. Okay. Make policemen policemen again. Okay. You're a one. You're, you know you do your the entire job from writing parking tickets mm -hmm. to family beefs to whatever you get involved in, and you do it in a soft, nice blue uniform. Okay. They keep talking about the blues. There aren't any more blues. Mm -hmm. They're all black. Okay. You know you you you've been doing some of the editing on the on, on some of the stuff that's been written and whatever mm -hmm. from a historical standpoint. Yeah. What did you see that you noticed? Is it, it, it maybe? Anything that you oh, you mean um, uh, in terms of the Portland the yeah, poli police? Yeah, just for well, I mean, it, the Portland Police Bureau today to today has changed culturally okay. and socially too. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's definitely not the same police department that it was when Don was a police officer, and it's it's not just technology that's changed. It's it's the whole social climate of mm -hmm. the city that's mm -hmm. changed. Um, it's much more transparent, believe it or not, than it ever was before. Um, it's probably one of the best police departments in the country because so many other police departments are really, really corrupt, but we still have problems. So mm -hmm. there's still a lot of room for improvement um, with Portland Police Bureau, especially hiring more um, officers of color to police 
north and northeast Portland because policemen should look like the people that they're policing. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't are, just be but white. But are they allowed to, to police like any other police? Sure. That from, your, um, from the standpoint of researching, let's say from a historical standpoint, they did have black officers back during that particular time. But now what about today? I mean, are they, are they being able to arrest and being looked upon just like any other? Oh, sure. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like how, I mean, like in Don's book, he talks about the black police officers of the 60s and the 70s where a lot of them worked the night shift. They were in the jails. They were um, on the, the radio dispatch. Um, so there was definitely a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff that was happening then that's not happening today. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, that they're allowed to be police officers in the same way that any okay, other officer get, is. I'm get Roy but I'm not an expert, so. Okay. I'm gonna get Roy on this other part, and that's why I'm asking these people. Yeah. Something. Now, we still got this affirmative action situation mm -hmm. with, with different types of, um, uh, i.e. cultural groups, whether it be Asian, mm -hmm. and those are the Indian person that's on, on, the, on the department right now. Will they ever be to the point where they can just be officers who happen to be Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would ask, no, let's go, Roy. Let's I would talk. Ask, well, why would you want that? Yeah, I guess yeah. to me, okay. it's kind of like saying I, I'm people who tell the the lie. I'm saying I'm colorblind. And I don't mm -hmm. see color. Mm -hmm. Well, either you're oblivious to what makes me, me and the uniqueness that I bring, mm -hmm. or you're just a blubbering idiot and you just don't want to acknowledge people. But it really becomes it's important that you have an Asian officer, okay. or an Indian officer, an African American officer for that young kid. To yeah. see someone who looks like them, spe yeah. and specifically speaks to who they are, and lets mm -hmm. them know that they can aspire to do that. I think yeah. you know okay. when we look at our city, we're always hoping that the city uh, grows and that it becomes diverse, and that we can embrace that. Part of embracing diversity is really embracing in that person's individuality, whether it's culturally, whether it's religiously, whether it's how their sexual orientation is. You might not. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but you have to acknowledge they're part of what makes Portland Portland. Mm -hmm. And as we move forward, unless we have the capacity to do that, we lose out on future talent. And I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it's in law enforcement or the private sector or social service, the more we lose out on potential talent because they don't see that as a place mm -hmm. that they can be, the more we lose the talent that's going mm -hmm. to continue mm -hmm. to make Portland develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the reason why I brought this point on is that we are constantly... Well, now we, we're saying we still have some major problems as far as racism is concerned. And you would think if we're, sort of, so we're supposed to be a sophisticated society, assimilation should have already been here. Mm -hmm. But not here, we look like we're starting all over. I mean, day one. So meaning that from a historical standpoint, when I was growing up, if you will, um, uh, it was a one-sided situation. Uh, but we did do career day back in, you know, back in school and whatever, and you know, people wanted to be officers and whatever. They were limited in terms of some of the things they would do. I didn't know all of the, the parts and whatever. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that we're not do, we don't do career day at all. You got me? And you, you're making the point about we should have, uh, you know, for various cultural groups, they should have someone, like you said, that look like them. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, right. Yeah. We have those career days. I think schools and all that have career days, uh -huh. and they do all those traditional things. Right. But I think it goes more kind of what the Don was saying. When yeah. you see that officer in your neighborhood who right. looks like you, okay, or when they talk to your parents, you know there's a connection just beyond that. Okay. And being able to see it. One of the, one of the things I agree with Don is officer friendly. Yeah. He had just that regular suit on. He didn't come looking paramilitary. Well, just the yeah. name itself. Yeah. I mean, but, you have but, to change but, the name. And I think also in the sense of an officer, when you think about that old officer, okay. he might have had his gun, but he had I the suit. He had the officer suit. Versus now when we think of officer, it's that more paramilitary thing. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And, and to what Don said, it's less a member of the community. Mm -hmm. If that officer in the suit gets out and walks around, that's a different connotation mm -hmm. than a, a guy who looks like he's about ready to bust yeah. down the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And really, yeah. but also having kids to see that. Like, I do, I work over at a couple of high schools and seeing school resource officers, actual PPD officers yeah. who are black or who are of color or who are women and allow kids to see someone in that position mm -hmm. and look at it as a professional mm -hmm. career, not necessarily stigmatizing it as those people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what you say, because as we say, a lot of what, we, what we're really talking about is how do we create real pathways for, this, for these to be opportunities mm -hmm. for our young people in the future? And the first thing you have to do 
is take down that us and them barrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me this, Royal. You've been to many meetings, and I know you have, many, many meetings, and you see a lot of people around the table, from police to, to people of authority and the whole nine yards. Are they getting what you're saying? And if they're, if they're getting what you're saying, what more do we need to do? And if they're not getting what you're saying, what, what, what do we have to do to get them to the table? Again, that's one of the reasons why I'm, we're doing this. I would say a lot of people get it. A lot of people intrinsically feel it. But to make that shift requires you have to give up something. And for a lot of people, whether it's status, position, the status quo, the comfort of what I'm comfortable with, paradigm shift can be scary. Mm -hmm. And you know, with law enforcement, one of the challenges working with law enforcement in this modern time is they have gone to more a social service model in the sense that they, like I think what Don has talked about before, is doing things that aren't inherently law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement's yeah. two roles are to catch people and to make sure people are safe. And that's what they do really well. Mm -hmm. uh, being a social service agency, being a resource generator, being a mediator, those aren't really law enforcement tasks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the difficulty comes is once law enforcement is allocated money for that and it's in the budget, how do they let go of something they're not really good at, but the money is something we really need? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. how does public health wrestle violence away from law enforcement? Mm -hmm. How do we really let uh, mental health drivers and mental health practitioners be the driver of engagement? Mm -hmm. How does law enforcement give up that money? Mm -hmm. Or just importantly, all those ancillary groups who contract with law enforcement and do kind of a semi-okay job and maintain the status quo versus really pushing the envelope mm -hmm. towards change, mm -hmm. do they capitulate and say, well, this isn't really effective? Do they, mm -hmm. do they, call, do they call these entities out and risk losing their own money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it has to do with what are people willing to give up for a different, for a different city, for a mm -hmm. different paradigm mm -hmm. on how we address things, you know? So how are they responding to that? I mean, like, that's why I'm still asking that question. And sitting guess, in these meetings, I know you made the statement to them. Mm -hmm. How did they respond to you? Did, did the mayor interact with I that guess, situation? Did I the, guess I wouldn't. The chief? Uh, I guess I wouldn't put it on one, any one individual because here's the deal. Charlie's going to be gone in a year. Yep. Sam was gone. Mm -hmm. Vera was gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these individual people who play a position aren't really big as these institutions. Mm -hmm. You know, the department, the police department is going to be far, there far longer than any one individual. So to think that, it's kind of always, one of the examples I use is this. If you're out in the Indian Ocean, it's a lot easier to turn a jet ski than the USS George Bush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are quite a few people in that process who have to agree with your navigation choices mm -hmm. or they can just say no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therein lies with big entities of government the same kind of process. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are along, around a lot longer than politicians and their salaries are mm -hmm. more interest than creating a new paradigm that challenges their status quo. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that people aren't well intentioned. Mm -hmm. And also one of the things that happens is we, as, as Portland, in my opinion, we sometimes suffer from this inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we feel like we're the stepchild of Seattle <laughs> or San Francisco <laughs> or mm -hmm. Oakland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, we have mm -hmm. to, and we have to go looking somewhere else for ideas on how to innovate mm -hmm. when a lot of the same creative forces are here, we just go spend money in other places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to sol solving a lot of our social problems, whether it's law enforcement, public health, we go spend money other places and bypass mm -hmm. all the richness of the ideas here yeah. that could also be incubators for industry and more things here. So, you know, it's really okay. taking advantage of Portland. You, you were talking about yeah, well, were, people TV, were, you? were people listening, um, you know, and I just think of it like this, actions speak louder than words. And I remember when the Regional Arts Council, mm -hmm. they had Wheeler and Bailey, you know, I mean, that's what they had for their presentation. They didn't include Fred Stewart. They didn't include... Chloe Udele, they didn't include the other people that were running for seat four or, I mean, to me, I was so incensed when I read about that because it was so elitist and exclusionary. That showed me what those kinds of entities really value. Hmm. Hmm. 
Mm. I was so upset. And what what that was the happened. moderator when they were doing this? I, I don't remember. I just know that they didn't include all of the candidates. Yeah, they yeah, included. Yeah. They had Ted Wheeler and they had Jules Bailey. And that, that was, it. was it. That was it. Well, you know, let me throw something on the table and, and, and kind of responding to what some of the things you're saying, and then Royal too at the same time, and even Don in many ways. A thought that has come to mind is that. Like you were saying, the, the, the mayors leave, every these people leave, and then yeah. the same structure of the police department yeah. is still there, aspect of it. What say if um, uh, the mayor has, say, four years, aspect of it, and then, and, and then you know, all of a sudden then the incumbents come, whether they run again or they don't, uh, the, the media would, would interview that mayor and, and talk about and ask him questions about uh, what you, 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 came, you, you had this agenda when you walked in. And these are the things you were said you were going to do, and you got ten items up there, and you got two left. You know, talk about okay, this is what we've done up to this point in time. We got we got these things of concern, or we got some additional aspect of it. And then the idea is that after they've interviewed that, then they promote that throughout the community, throughout everybody, for that matter. Then if a person wants to run for office, at least they have some ideas in one, in terms of do I have a solution to that problem? Can I be a better person to better our way of life? Mm -hmm. And so then when a person goes and files to run for office, they would then have to lay out uh, this is the issue that I'm going to be running on mm -hmm. and this is how I'm going to respond to this issue and, and, and that kind of a deal. What do you think about that? I'm just throwing it on the table. Any response? Talk to me. Can we educate? I'm just trying to think about what you were saying about people leave office. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it's a fact. You don't have no ideas. You, you, you don't get called in. In fact, I just filed. You know, I just filed. It cost me 50 bucks, mm -hmm. and all they had to do was put my name down. Mm -hmm. And people don't know what they, I don't have my background or nothing. They just, there it is. So do you think they should re, re, um, revise the th policies? That's, really, that's something that in all due respect, if I get there, I'm going to definitely look at. Mm -hmm. I guess my challenge to that would be in a free and democratic society, mm -hmm. Why would you want to create barriers for people to participate? Well, but then I'm saying to you. Uh, now, because on the other side, I could always say this. Okay. If you have that, if you have $50 to, to, to cast right, your right. name into the lot, right. then it's incumbent upon you or that individual to have the resources to spread out to articulate your message. Now, there should be just fair and reasonable yeah. procedural pathways for that to happen. Yeah. But at the same time, okay. that's if it were a grassroots movement, you, it would still be the same thing. It would still be that 50. You would just have to find the capacity to share that message. And I think for a lot of people, they, they have a great idea. They might want to be mayor. But what separates contenders from pretenders is the ability <laughs> to generate support in revenue yeah. to pass on their message. But where is the issue? See, the key is that the issue is the key. It's not the individual. Mm -hmm. It's the issue. Someone has to identify the issue of concern. That's what you should be running on. Not quote the money, whatever. But you may not have any money, but if you got, but if you got some ideas, the, oh, the I issue, like it. Now we get there. The issue goes by the wayside because okay, the I'm mayor comes and goes, the mayor comes go. and goes, the commissioners come and okay. go, but the civil service people are still there. Mm -hmm. The people that run the ship, okay. the people that okay. steer the okay. steer the boat, they're still there. The mayor has a staff. He's going, always going to have a staff. It may be probably even some of the same staff. Okay. So you have to keep reinventing these. We need to do this now. Okay. Every inch, every every candidate that comes in says, we need to reinvent this, or we need to redo this, or we need to re restudy this. Mm -hmm. Because when Vera was gone, all the idea, a lot of her ideas went with her. Mm -hmm. And but so, but why, 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 why not the interview? Now you're, in, the now you're in. Your ideas are going to be. It's up to you. To say, well, this is what I want to do now because it's too much of this is going by the wayside. No, but what I want to do is that what I want to do, I'd like to at least have some idea of the issues that were first brought on by Vera. Sure. <laughs> Give an update, and then if I feel maybe the idea I might want to run on, say, hey, look, it's already been taken care of, I, w I wouldn't run. I guess it will become in metro area of Portland about, like you say, we're about 700,000 people. Right. Now, for one person to say, what the previous person ran on, and this is my extension of that, might not be reflected. It could be that person came with yeah. a platform before an economic downturn. It mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. the, an influx in population. It could be those things. And also, when you really look at mayor, it's kind of like a popularity contest. Can you make me feel that you'll make me feel good for the next four mm -hmm. years? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily do you put in a substantive structural change. Like what 
best example. There are so many people m mad because Charlie, they hold Charlie Hales accountable for the housing crisis in Portland. Mm -hmm. Never do they look at the fact that you have so many owners of property who are gorging people. Never do they look at the personal responsibility of property owners in doing these things. Nor do mm -hmm. they just look at the fact that Charlie Hales legally can't go to somebody and say, I can tell you what to do mm -hmm. with your property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. These are all things that will change through policy, through legislation, through the use of a bully pulpit to hold these entities accountable. It won't be because this guy said he can fix so much mm -hmm. and manage us for four years. Mm -hmm. And I think as an electorate, talking about the consensus of people who live in Multnomah County, it's not incumbent on that person to prove to you he's not a fool. It's incumbent on you to do your research to know he, whether or not he looks like a fool when he's coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, again, that's what we're talking about. You know, the fact of the matter is, we got issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and the key is that how do you get folks to come to the table to say, hey, we are going to have to change policy? I mean, it, it's a are tough Are you talking job. about those looking for a position, or are you talking no, about no. just the general electorate? No, no, the issue, yeah, because it's still, it's supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, for the people. So that's many people idea. just don't care. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I know. No, but how do we get to the point that we can get the kind of leadership that will deal with policy mm -hmm. that talks about the issues that we have? Just like he was saying about the housing thing. Mm -hmm. it, it is a major issue. I mean, here we got Charlie. Remember, you just met Charlie. Mm -hmm. What happened to the other four commissioners? See, that's, that's the other problem about this city. Mm -hmm. We don't know who our commissioners are. Mm -hmm. But it, and I guess here's my thing: they have <laughs> their own cable TV, they're on the news all the time, and technically you can go to the website. So what I it goes to this: you can only be an A student if you do enough research and due diligence to produce a product. And if people want government presented to them and given to them, it's kind of like the kid who wants an A, but he just shows up and sits in the chair and doesn't. No but they work. don't run. Harry. That's the you problem. Know? So, so for us, so for us, like I say, for <laughs> us, the accountability, and and I guess the better way to say it is this: if you want quality candidates for positions, right, go on. You have to hold the electorate accountable, because it is incumbent on each person to have that knowledge. Now, the question for me is, it, going back to your question more so of how do we create that? Yeah. You wipe out certain generations and realize if at a certain age, they're not going to change. And really, it's about how do we produce future generations? Because at a certain point, the question is, do we kind of bemoan the fact that we as adults have blown it? Or do we create an institution that through our young people being educated and an informed electorate, they don't have to repeat the cycle? Mm -hmm. And that's really it. Because adults, we're on the way out. Yeah. So it might as well make sure those people who are here actually have something worth doing and understand how to survive the processes that we didn't fully appreciate. Mm -hmm. Well, we did have an education system at one point in time that did sort of help that out. But now I question the education system and we got the young folks who, are, who have all this energy, but guess what? They don't have the tools. A lot, yeah, a lot of they, times A lot they of don't. them don't have the tools. Yeah. So how do we go, go about doing that? So that means that, in all due respect, the folk with the history Mm -hmm. needs to recognize it to make sure that they, they, they keep those vehicles in place, if mm -hmm. you will, so that folks can come in a transition way. And you're right. We got, we got in the, like I could say, I say point blank, I would say about maybe 50, 60 percent of the people who are running for mayor today they have no idea. It's just that there's a frustration. Mm -hmm. There's a frustration. But is that, the right, is that the right posture to make that particular seat? That's what available. makes people move is anger. So there's a lot of people mad. So that's why they're running for yeah, that. I'm going right. to change it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Some way, shape, or form, we need to identify the issues. At least, <coughs> at least prior. There's, there's a minute. There's all sorts of issues, right? There might be 50. But listen, mm -hmm. if we can prioritize them one through 50 and say, okay, fine, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take the prioritization and take the maybe the first four. That hopefully includes a lot of the folks that people are recognized aspect mm -hmm. of it and deal with those five. Yeah. Then you've got these other issues, and then, then as time goes, you can move, maybe you've, you've done those and you come up with something else. It seems uh, like one of the most important issues right now is homelessness and housing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just, I don't even recognize this city anymore. Right, right. It's not the Portland I grew up in. But before we get in that, no, we're going to come back on that one, but I want to get back <laughs> on the police piece for a minute. Mm -hmm. There's another piece I'm going to throw out on the table. There's sort of a recognition that, that police runs the city. Well, how do we get that mindset mm -hmm. together? You know, like, like they're, they're in charge. They, they run the city of Portland. 
Hmm. Because I'm going to throw that out to you. Because it's true. Pretty, it is true. It is pretty much true. Why uh, is that so? Well, because the last election with Charlie Hales, he was, in my opinion, intimidated by the police union. Mm -hmm. Some of some uh, things that he could have asked for that they give up, like the 48-hour, I'm not going to talk to you rule. He didn't even ask them to do that. So it's more important for him to have the police support than it is to do the right thing. And that's always the problem. And Royal is right about we need to stop worrying about the old people who are like us who are going to be gone anyhow and start talking to the younger people. We need to recruit the younger policemen because these old cops are going to be gone and a lot of them this coming year. But somebody's got to train them. Somebody's got to train them. <laughs> who are they going to listen to? This, this is the problem with police culture. Talk to you. The problem with police culture in the last 35 years is that police in Portland have gone from blue collar working class to middle class and upper mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to a retired sergeant who I won't name, and he told me, we talked about this for a long time, um, I, there's a little cafe, John's Cafe, it's right below the, um, the Golden West, the Golden Hotel, West yeah. Hotel, and they've run that hotel for 43 years, or the, the, the cafe, mm -hmm. for 43 years, and I was talking to her about a month ago, and she said, you know, the cops that worked in the 70s, the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, they were nice. They would come in, they would come here, they would have their breakfast, they were nice, they talked to us. Now the cops, and she did this with her, you know, she's a, uh, she's a, a Greek woman and she has a wonderful accent. She did this to indicate that they're snobby. Mm. And that's the problem. I mean, yeah. it's like, they don't, there, there aren't any blue collar, there aren't as many blue collar working class police officers in Portland. And there's the, the 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 process of hiring police officers is so stringent it's so difficult that they they don't accept really probably good candidates and so the, and that's why there's this there's this deficiency that because the, it's just impossible to be accepted and i've talked to cops uh, in beaverton and hillsborough that applied with P ppb and were turned down uh, one of them because he had a little bit of a credit problem they want perfection and they're not going to find it and that's one of the problems. You can't what? recruit virgins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, they want to, virgins. You've got to go to the younger people. We need to recruit in the schools. We need to take all the black officers and go mm -hmm. to the school, come and look like us, all the short policemen, all the tall policemen, all the yeah. gay policemen. Go well, to the schools yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. This is us. Yeah. We are you. You and, are us. And, Join and us. And the thing exactly. is, we don't, we don't need to look out of state. There's a lot of talent right here in Portland. We don't need to go out of state and get out of state yeah. bad apples that somebody wants to transfer. You heard these discussions. In these, uh, you, you hear us talking about this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you heard these discussions in some of the meetings that you've gone to. Mm -hmm. What do they think about this whole issue that, uh, you know, that the police force runs the city? I mean, have, you, have, you had, have they ever had that discussion? I mean, I, I mean, nobody's just gonna blatantly say the police department runs the city. Come on, man. come on, bro. Well, how do they wait? Do wait, it? is the come difference on, between come blatantly on, saying it and actually understanding and growing up in Portland and understanding okay. who are the people that have the most influence on how things work? And it's, and I guess to a certain degree. I can't really say it's a bad thing because it's about politics. It's not necessary. And I think to a certain degree, there's a, po there's a political aspect to law enforcement and there's a service delivery aspect to law enforcement. And the thing is, for the average person, we don't separate them because they drive two different things. The average person is going to see their neighborhood cop. You're not going to know who the power players in law enforcement are downtown and what they're looking at and what their budgets are and right. how, or the policeman's union yeah. and how they're mandated to look out for the 897 Portland police officers to get them the best deal, the best pension, the best protection, the best coverage for their people. And within all that, also have influence on how the city runs because like it or not, if violence spikes, the police are gonna be, be to blame. It could be rational, it could be irrational, but that's the perception. So if yeah. they're going to take all those hits, they're going to actually want all the rewards and all the perks to insulate themselves with it. You didn't mention the mayor. Or you it, didn't mention the po uh, police commissioner. You, you basically said, well, well you're going to blame the police. What happened to the, what well, happened to the commanding general? Well, he's accountable. But again, that's, the police commissioner is more of a political office than it is an operational day-to-day -day officer not, But office. not in charge. Type. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. He's the CEO of the police department. That's right. He needs okay. to be you know? damn well involved. 
Yeah. Okay, who is that? The the, the mayor? The, the 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 mayor. The police. Well, whoever the commission is, right? Be involved. Be involved, right? Right. They need no, to be in charge. To be the buck stops there, right? Mm -hmm. I've always said, if you don't like the way your police department works, fire the mayor. So let me ask you this question. Because here's what here's a question I have. So say like right now, Charlie Hales is the police commissioner. Right. He's he's, he's the top of the rung for bureau, police, right? Right. So here's my question. What qualified him, other than being a mayor and that being in his portfolio, to be the CEO of a hundred-year-old, multi-layered, multi-hundred million dollar organization and learn it on the fly and right. make all those decisions yeah. knowing you only have a finite amount of time mm -hmm. with the job? The answer is simple. He doesn't. So yeah. that was going to just, so do you think that the, that the, uh, it should be an independent police person or somebody who can devote more time to it versus putting it just as a portfolio thing to kind of oversee? Well, let me throw this in before he hands this speech. Well, first off, uh, we're both from the military, so mm -hmm. to speak. And in all due respect, police force is a paramilitary mm -hmm. kind of a deal. Oh, most definitely. And it's a structure, in all due mm -hmm. respect. And when a new CO comes to the base, mm -hmm. it's not expected of him to know every intricacy or whatever. There's, there's a structure, everybody knows this, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got various entities, you know, you got the, you got the ranks and you got all this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. and it just flows down the deal aspect of it. So um, it's not a situation where the CO has to know everything. But I would say, I would say the difference here is because it is paramilitary, Yeah. there's more politics sure. and public persuasion involved than just rank and file order and follow the system. True. Mm -hmm. So and, and there's that elaborate dance, and I say, and I say, as a citizen, not that I think the police is the greatest institution in Portland, but I do understand for their continuity, because I think sometimes there are certain things that have to do with law enforcement, and we get constraints in the relationship, because a mayor is thinking what's popular for my position sure. and my administration, mm -hmm. when law enforcement is thinking what's mm -hmm. most valuable to us mm -hmm. on this longitudinal base of saying over the next five, ten years and this guy or gal won't be here then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, folks, we, we, we're talking about, <laughs> but those individuals who are, well, two individuals, we're talking about the public who tends to the butt end of, the, of this whole issue of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. and, we got, and we're talking about the individual who's going to be in charge. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's what we're talking about, folks. And, and for those of you who are running for office here let's say the city of Portland whether it be mayor or, or a commissioner that's a heck of a responsibility and here we are talking about this thing mm -hmm. in an open view aspect of it and it, it shouldn't be taken lightly you know because in all due respect when you if in fact you're elected they'll give you the files say, here this is what you have to follow mm -hmm. and it's not it's not that easy if you will you got me I, I, I'm thinking about what you said I know one police captain who's no longer here who turned down the job as the chief of police, mm -hmm. because he didn't think the mayor right. was qualified to be the boss. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he didn't want any part of it. Right. Leo. And that was probably a wise decision on his mm -hmm. part because exactly what you said, the mayor was not qualified to be in charge of the police department. You're part figurehead, part responsible. It's kind of a tough. There's a, a real disconnect between yeah. um, police, police officers and sergeants and captains and lieutenants wanting to be governed by a person who has no experience in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. They resent it tremendously. Yeah, do. Don's referring to Leo Miller. Um, he was the man that ended up committing suicide and he could have been the chief of police back in the 70s. He chose not to because he didn't want to be told what to do by mm -hmm. Neil Goldschmidt, mm -hmm. who, doesn't, who mm -hmm. didn't have a background in law enforcement. So there, that's another aspect of police culture that's really problematic. Police don't like being told what to do because, because police work is, is is, it's police science too, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's 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 never straightforward. It's never simple. It's really mm -hmm. complex, mm -hmm. and so police tend to know what works and what doesn't work mm -hmm. on a good day, mm -hmm. and they resent people um, who don't have any background in mm -hmm. law enforcement. And then we talk about young folks today, who, well, in many ways, in all due respect, you know, the whole issue of the family and this, that, and the other, that that mindset's not there. You know, we got that's another major, major problem. You know what I mean? And they, they didn't get the training, they didn't get the education, if you will. And then you got, as you say, you've got folks who are, who are going to school day in and day out, picking up degrees and no jobs. Yeah. yeah. You got me? And, and, and you got to eat. Mm -hmm. And so consequently you say, well, gee whiz, I can, I can go over here and apply <coughs> with the department over here, you got me, and get the job because I've got that, 
on okay. tray. I got my yeah. degree mm -hmm. and have no background whatsoever dealing in mm -hmm. the social entity, entity of the people, especially those areas where they feel that's what they've identified with, yeah. the poor area aspect of it. Yeah. And, and so, I, so I would agree with you that uh, that's, what, that's one of the reasons why I'm suggesting that we need to change that, change if you will, that, that, that so-called filing system when you're running for office mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Come up with the background, an extensive background. I guess my question would be, here's, here, here's my caveat at that. What would you say is are the requisite skills to be a mayor? Because if it's a degree, there are a lot of people who don't have degrees yeah, who are yeah, highly yeah, intelligent. Yeah. Or I know some people that have multiple degrees. That are, that I, I agree. I, I agree. I'm so agreeing I, with so that. So I guess, again, it goes to... <laughs> we got about another. We're going to do How much time we have? <coughs> yeah, it goes to, are you bringing in somebody who has a vision of where Portland should be? And the requisite skill thing should be is the competencies needed to not to not only do the job but to be surround yourself with talented people. Yeah, I yeah, think more yeah, importantly yeah, than yeah, just saying, yeah, okay, yeah. what you can do. And, and again, mm -hmm. we have 16 people running for mayor. Competency, message, popularity, and finance are going to wash out everybody except for one. Mm -hmm. And the reality not necessarily. Is, and the reality is I mean, this: no, you can't you can't you can't say that from the forms that I've seen. No, here's what I would say. But <laughs> listen what I'm saying. Go on. Whether it's they're competent enough, mm -hmm. they're persuasive enough, mm -hmm. they have enough money or enough opportunity to get their message out. Out of those okay. four, if okay. you use those four channels, yeah. okay. at the end of the day, only one person is going to be left. Mm -hmm. And with that, the thing that has the society, that our community has accepted is, if you do participate, make sure the most competent person that gets the job. If you don't participate, you have no say. And if you kind of sit on the sideline, somebody else is going to make your decision for you. Mm -hmm. And at this point, like we say, the question really is, do we make, with all the challenges, housing, mm -hmm. education, well, yeah, access, yeah, 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 are we yeah. really, Portland is going to become another major Pacific Rim mini megalopolis mm -hmm. yeah. it's gonna happen yeah. the question becomes how do we move forward with that are we going to bemoan the housing prices or do we really think do things to stimulate manufacturing and high-end technology jobs in this area we are really globally an innovator in the tennis shoe industry with with all these people coming in with all these talents are we cultivating that or to a degree are we just going to have to accept we're going to have two Portlands, and how do we make both of those Portlands healthy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the majority of the people that are going to be here don't have the money, and you got to relate to them <laughs> because otherwise, who's paying the taxes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you got the people with the money who are going to hire themselves with the money because they're thinking about themselves. I mean, that's just the way it is to a certain mm -hmm. degree. So that's why I'm saying I think it, it's it's very important to attach a resume. <laughs> To, to folks who run to get I, I, some sense of, yeah. of background and mm -hmm. are you yeah. people oriented uh, right. you know that's why I'm saying take the money out because yeah. the person who may file may have the solution may, may not have the money so let them file mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and then then you can you can whatever I, I know what, what you're getting at and a, a really good example of it is this um, group that was formed about a year ago that um, review and we, we applied, Don and I applied, it was a citizen review. Citizen review board. And we applied and we were both really good candidates. They chose a lot of really interesting, colorful people that were probably not mm -hmm. the best suited. And then about six or eight months into it, several of them left and it kind of collapsed. And then they contacted both of us and asked us if we wanted to be on it again. Mm -hmm. And we were busy and we were, we were publishing his book and we, we were like, well, I'm really sorry, mm -hmm. we can't do that. So oh, I yeah. think that it's, it's a lot like what Royal says. Mm -hmm. It is a popularity contest. Yeah, it is, it is. You guys, we gotta take it, that out yeah. though. That's yeah. the problem. Here's yeah. the deal. How do you do it? You don't. That's in the fabric of America. <laughs> it's in the fabric of the state of Oregon. Okay. It's in the fabric of our political process. It's a popularity contest. What happens is you're only getting that popularity contest from a segment. So it's not necessarily you remove that, you increase the pie. Make, make the, create a bigger pie so the popularity, people, other people have an opportunity to take advantage of I'm agreeing of with you, but the dollar is still gonna overcome the popularity. Mm -hmm. The popularity is the money. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to, we're trying to get the money account. Because in all due respect, uh, I'm not a popular guy. But I will match my resume with anybody that is running. They couldn't compete. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, the money deal, it should not be about the money. It should yeah. be about the issue. Mm 
Yeah. And I'm agreeing with you, but it's got to be about the issue. Yeah. And those individuals kind of have to say, that's why I'm saying, put the issues on the table. Mm -hmm. Put but the I issues on the table. That's going to require one person to say these are the issues. I, because again, I guess I say like this. No, I want everybody, for 16, I want everybody for 16 to put the people, down. you're going to have the but, whole pie of issues. No, but with what, that said, I'm agreeing with you, but put them down on paper when you file. I might, and it, why? I guess my, my question would be, why do, I have be to, why do I have to tip my hand now? Tip your hand now? It's, a, it's an election contest. No, I don't want you tipping. I don't want you to give me your issue, because if, is, if you're not issue oriented, you can't run. You see, that was, that, <laughs> again, we've had this process all this time. It would be cool, but the little guy has to realize you got to play by the rules. And sometimes, again, I'm a little I, guy. Guess, I guess here's one thing I would always say. I'd look at it like this. Sometimes people will complain about a $10 steak more than they will think about how to get $15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's a little deep right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sure how, how did we get the steaks? <laughs> I don't even eat steaks now. What I mean by that is we'll think about how much the deficit is without thinking about how do I creatively address the deficit mm. over time? Okay. okay. Right, okay. the negative instead of the positive. Okay. Yeah, I, get well, that. I tell you what, Richard, Richard's got a, an announcement he wants to make. We're going to take a short break. We're going to take a short break, and he wants to make sure that he get this announcement in. Let's, let's do that, okay? Terrible. But this has been good. We're going to continue on. But the whole idea, folks, I just want to, I just want to let you know that uh, it's a very important election at this point in time. If, in fact, we want to maintain the City of Roses, we're going to have to work for it. Because we caught in two different areas. We got Washington on one side, we got California on the other side, and we're sitting down in the middle. And we've been living pretty good. And things are going to change if we don't get the right leadership. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yeah. Okay? We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Hello. Uh, apparently, the Portland Tribune, of which everybody can get a copy of, right, has uh, in the back of this business section has a schedule for the city council. <laughs> you get those rich. There, there you go. Well, uh, you got public it. Okay. notices too. Okay. Public this notices. Crazy. There you go. Okay, and it's. A whole double page of, of the agenda. Wow! For the for the city council. Is that for a week, a month, or what? Uh, What's for the next day. For the next day. Uh, yeah, for the next day. Wow! Like uh, there's here four people that want to talk hmm. before the meeting. Re request of Sharon Nasset to address councils regarding homelessness. Hmm. So there's a little bit of everything. Uh, Mayor Charlie Hales, Nick Fish, Charlie Hales back on. Hmm. Is this a Steve first? Novick. Is this a first? They're going to be doing this now on a continuing basis? Uh, this is the second week I've seen this, this schedule. Second week inside in the, the Tribune. Inside the back. So of they the are Tribune. going to be carrying it once a week. Yeah. Because they, right. they meet once every Wednesday, right? Every Wednesday. This, if you pick up the paper on right. Tuesday, mm -hmm. then you got the schedule for 
the, the entire next schedule. day. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That is so awesome. It's, it's very current. That is awesome. It, boy, so by, uh, well, wow, that, that is great news. Because yeah, the only yeah. problem I have with it, Richard, is that they meet during the week. <laughs> People they are do. working. That's right. That's right. <laughs> People are working. Why can't they do it on weekends? Okay. Uh, well. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, we'll work on that. Have the schedule. Yeah, right? we'll yeah. work on that. But the idea is that it's a good system. I've been I've been before that body before. Oh yes. But and again, I, it's during the week. And then I find out how long you can wait before exactly. they get through with Ex everything exactly. else before they can get to and you. And you only have two minutes. Now, how can you talk in two minutes? Can you talk in two minutes? Uh, no. And brought up an issue. Well, if you had something really thing, but you wouldn't get any feedback. You wouldn't find out what's going to happen on it. Yes, and most people are nervous. You know, and they they, they don't speak to the what public. Time certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah just I two mean, minutes. By the time okay. you sit down and you, if you're nervous, if you're new, if you haven't done this kind of stuff that we've right. done, right? You know, by the time you get to the point and say, well, this is my deal, next. Right. And then they get upset, right? That's, that's probably <laughs> right. They get very upset. Okay, so well, we want to. Okay, good. Thank you for watching and want to thank, again, thank our crew. And um, don't forget, pick up your Tribune. Tribune. Yes, Tribune. please pick it up. And we'll work it's on that, right? It's a Tuesday issue. That's it's a right. Tuesday issue yeah. for Wednesday. Yeah. Or Wednesday. Right, right Wednesday. Right. Okay, good. I'm surprised to find that that's the way it works. Good deal. They're going to do this every week. That's going to be great. That's going to be just great. Yeah. But I, I prefer it being on weekends, they, Saturdays. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get the note out there for them for that. So that's a very important piece. That's right. the first time I've seen that. Right. The, they're becoming the major newspaper. The Oregonian is kind of like going behind them. And it's free. And, and uh, yes, and this it's comes free. out like on Thursday when the Oregonian is not delivered. That's right. And it's free.